put it up against his mouth but he would not drink how valuable you are verse 35 we don't have time for self pity hello somebody nobody cares about me grow up look to the son of God and say there is someone that cares for me his name is Jesus verse 35 then they crucified him you would think everything they already did was enough. But man wasn't done. They crucified Jesus. And then they divided his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. Remember, these are messianic prophecies that Christ fulfilled. Spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them. From my clothing, they cast lots. Go ahead, you can get the next video of the crucifixion. Video, honey. When Jesus reached the top of the hill, they laid him down on an old rugged cross and crucified him. They drove nails that were six to eight inches long right here into his wrist. Normally we think, oh, right here into the hand, but technically it really wasn't the center of a person's palm or their hand because if they would have nailed him like that, It just slid off of the cross. So they had to put it through. If you feel right here, you've got two bones that come together. And they put that nail right there through the center of his bone to hold him upon the cross. Oh, yes, this allowed Jesus to hang up on the cross without sliding off. They then placed his feet upon a cross and they put one nail through his feet. Why? Because they wanted him to support himself as he suffered and suffocated to death. Oh, yes, church, Jesus hung upon that cross for three long Taking the pain for you, for me. I've never done anything bad. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. It was your sin that allowed Christ to go through all of that. As Jesus hung on that cross, he did so for three hours, paying the penalty. For your sin. For my sin. As Jesus hung up on the cross, the soldiers then parted his garments. Go to the next slide, Sister Miranda. Soldiers gambling for the bloody robe. Remember, that robe, only rulers and kings wore that. It was expensive, costly. And yet they're gambling. For the bloody robe of Christ. They're going to get home. They're going to wash it up and sell it and make some money. Or, or hang on to it as a souvenir. Look what we did to that Jew that claimed he was the Messiah. Don't mess with Rome, they were thinking. <coughs> Once again, this fulfilled the messianic prophecy. You say, well, who cares about messianic? These are visible, undeniable truths about the messiahship of Jesus. Written some seven, eight hundred, and some of them nine hundred years before the birth of Jesus. Amen. Psalm twenty-two, eighteen. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots, or they throw dice. Whoever's number it lays on, and they guess that they get the robe. Verse thirty-six. Sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Do you want to see mankind at its absolute lowest? It's that verse right there. As Jesus is hanging on a cross, paying the ultimate penalty for man's sin and redemption, sinful man is just sitting back looking at Jesus, not willing to help him at all. Verse 37, And they put over his head an accusation written against him, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. 
This inscription was written in mockery. But what man meant to be a mockery, it was really truth and reality. Jesus was, and he still is, the king of the Jews. And I'm glad to say he's not just the king of the Jews. He's my king. He's your king. He's king of kings. He's a lord of lords. And one day, every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess. He is the lord of lords. To the glory of God the Father. They meant to mock him. But all they were doing was testifying. This is the king of the Jews. Verse 38 through 40. <laughs> then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right, the other on the left. And those who passed by, those who walked by the everybody up there, they blasphemed him, they blasphemed Jesus, wagging their heads like dogs. Verse 40. And saying, You who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. You say you're God, Jesus, then save yourself. They said, if you were the son of God, come down from the cross. Notice they said, if you're the son of God. Little did they know that since Jesus was the son of God, he would not come down from the cross. If you wasn't the son of God, he'd have said, whoa, 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 boys, I'm sorry. This is just too much for me. I admit it, I'm a fraud, I'm a fake, I'm a phony. Just let me down so I can go and make sure I get bandaged up and held. But that's not what the son of God did. Because he was the son of God said, I'm going to stay here until my time is up. I'm going to pay the price for new hope sin. Amen. Christ didn't have to prove anything to the mockers. And you need to quit thinking you've got to prove yourself to everybody else. Come on, somebody. Well, i got to prove myself to this person, that person, that person. They still think I'm local. <laughs> Let God be your judge. Yes. Quit worrying about trying to get the approval of everybody else. Right. Live a life of integrity and honesty, and time will prove who you are. Yes. That's for free. 41, verse, four, verse 31. I don't know what kind of accent that is. Amen. <laughs> verse 31. 41 through 44. Y'all still here? Yes. We're almost done. Likewise, the chief priests also, mocking with the scribes and the elders, said, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he's the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross. We will believe him. Verse 43, he trusted in God. Let, him, let God deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with Jesus reviled him with the same thing. Once again, we see while Jesus was on the cross, he was being mocked the entire time. So quit crying about how everybody's mocking me. Everybody's mocking my Christianity. Everybody's mocking my new walk, my new talk, my new way of life. Listen, do you not think that if Christ suffered, you're not going to have to suffer some things? If Jesus was mocked and ridiculed, you need to count yourself worthy that people look at you like they looked at Jesus and say, thank the Lord they're laughing at me. I must have something they wish they had. Matthew's gospel lets us know that at first both of the, both of the thieves were mocking Jesus. But something got a hold of one of those thieves and they looked at him and said, or the, one of the, the repentant thief looked at Jesus and said, you know what? We deserve to be up here. We deserve to die. But that man in the middle, he hasn't done anything deserving of death. So he cried out, Lord, remember me. And Jesus said, Jesus said, today, you will be with me in paradise. That's all it takes to be saved. Are you a sinner on your way to hell? Here's good news. You don't have to leave like that. <laughs> Aren't you thinking you don't got to leave like you can? You may have come in here addicted to this and that. You don't got to leave dirty and filthy and unclean. You can leave saying I'm holy. I'm righteous. I've been redeemed by the precious blood. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Ephesians 
Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith. Not through your works. You're saved through faith in Christ alone. Yes, good. Not in yourselves. It's a gift of God. Yes. Not of works, lest any man should boast. The thief on the cross didn't have any works he could boast in. All he could do was say, Have mercy on me. Remember me. Oh, thank God. Salvation doesn't come through works. It comes through Christ. Verse 45. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. The Lord was put on a cross at the third hour, which would have been nine o'clock in the morning. By 12 noon, sinful man had done all he could to Jesus. For three long hours, the Son of God, hanging upon that cross, his cross became an altar. It was on that altar of the cross that the Lamb of God hung there slain for the sin of the world. During these three hours, darkness covered the land. The darkness that covered the earth was not a result of a solar eclipse, but it was the result of the sinless eyes of God the Father having to look away from His Son because His Son was bearing all of our sin and shame. All of your lying, your cheating, your stealing, your fornicating, your lusting, your adultery, your drunkenness, your drug addiction, all oh, your evilness, your wickedness, everything that you have ever done was upon him. So we sing that song tonight. Upon him, upon him, every sin you ever committed was upon him that day. That's why God had to, God the Father had to look away. His holy eyes could not behold our unholy sin. That's why 2 Corinthians 5 21 says, For he became sin who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Verse number 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatni, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why did Jesus cry that out? Once again, he was fulfilling yet another messianic prophecy. Psalm 22, one states that when the Messiah comes, he would cry out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus was forsaken by the Father at that moment in order that you and I could be accepted by God. Although Jesus never sinned, not even once. He was judged as if he were the only individual who had ever sinned. Verse number 47 through 49. Some of those who stood there, when they heard that, that's verse number 47, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. Verse 48, immediately one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with sour wine, put it on a reed and offered it him to drink. And the rest said, let him alone. Let's see if Elijah will come to save him. Why did they give Jesus that sponge? As we mentioned long ago, to help alleviate the pain. They didn't want him to die yet. They wanted him to suffer just a little bit longer. You have to know Jesus was going to die when God said he was going to die. His times were in his, God's hands. And we can rest in comfort knowing that our times are in his hands. Verse number, uh, Psalm 69, 20 through 21. Listen, this is yet another messianic prophecy about how Jesus felt when he's on the cross. You want to know how God feels? You want good insight? Here it is. Psalm 69, 20 and 21. Jesus, Jesus said, the psalmist knew it, it was prophesied, reproach has broken my heart. I believe God at heart is, pro is broken even tonight over people that continue to play games with him over the price that he has paid. God doesn't send anyone to hell. People send themselves there because they ignore the sacrifice of God's son, Jesus. Jesus said, reproach has taken, broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. The heaviness of man's sin is upon me. I'm feeling the rejection of the Father as those people should. Jesus says, I look for someone to take pity. 
someone to feel sorry for me. But there was none that gave them shh, 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 laughing as daddy. And for my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. Verse 50, y'all still with me? Last verse, say last verse. And Jesus cried, verse 50. He cried out with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. What did Jesus cry out? John 19 and 30 tells us, it is finished. It is finished. What was finished? Your redemption. My redemption. Jesus was saying, Father, I prayed in John 17 that I would finish the work that you sent me to do. And Father, it is finished. I have paid the ultimate price. Their forgiveness has been paid for. Their redemption has been paid for. Their forgiveness of sin has been paid for. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. After Jesus died, there was nothing else that needed to be done. Hear that again. After Jesus' death, nothing else needed to be done. The price has been paid. Some have said, well, his work was not yet completed. He still had to raise from the dead. I disagree. Why is that? Because Jesus never sinned. The resurrection of Christ was a foregone conclusion. How can you say that? Because Romans 6 and 23 says, the wages of sin is death. But if Christ had never sinned, death had no ability to hold him. Death had no ability to lay claim on the Son of God. Jesus said it is finished. The price has been paid. The sin debt of man has been paid. The law has been fulfilled. Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law. I come to fulfill it. And it was fulfilled that day when Jesus died. Let's all stand to our feet. And if our musicians could please come back to the platform. Let's all stand. Let's just lift up our hands to the Lord tonight. Come on, let's worship you. Lord, we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. This is Christianity. This is what it's all about. It's all about the fact that you came and you died for us. Is anyone here and you just say to yourself, I don't know God. I don't know Jesus as my Savior. But I've heard about his love. And I'm ready to receive him tonight. Maybe you're here to say, I need God. I want to give you the opportunity to know him. You don't have to be afraid to come to him. He's here and he loves you. salvation. I don't want to die in my sin. I don't want to go to hell. I see what he did for me. I want to come to know Jesus tonight. Why don't you come? You just come. Just take a step of faith time. You just come. Just stand up here. I'll pray with you real quick. Just lead you in a simple little prayer. It doesn't take, you know, 20 minutes or whatever to give your heart to the Lord. As we learn from the thief on the cross, all it takes is a whisper, Lord, remember.